everyone, Mark here. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to prolong the life of your DI resin. Now, DI resin is used in water purification systems. You may have a single stage DI pressure vessel such as this, sometimes also called a DI tank, or you may be using refillable DI cartridges that would sit inside a housing. So, like I said, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to prolong the life of that DI resin. Now, there's two different types of DI systems here, and I'm going to show you the difference between how each one works. So in the case of the DI pressure vessel, let me just unscrew this here. So what happens is you have one side that the water will input through. The water will go through. It'll seep through the DI resin beads that are inside the pressure vessel. When it gets down to the bottom, it'll make contact with the bottom of the riser. Now this riser here has slits in this, so it allows the water to be pressure, pressurized and raised up through the top, and it'll come through the output as pure water. Now in the case of the DI cartridge, what happens is water will come inside the housing, it'll go down and fill up the housing, and then when it meets to the bottom, the bottom of the cartridge actually has openings. So the water then will be pressurized and pushed up through the resin beads that are inside the cartridge, and then finally through the output and outside of the housing, of course, to make pure water. So like I said, in today's video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to prolong the life of DI resin. It's amazing, uh, just a few of these tips, practicing them quite regularly, you can get a lot more jobs done and save yourself money on buying new resin in the long run. So the type of DI resin we use in these systems is often referred to as a mixed bed resin. Technically speaking, it's actually an ion exchange resin. And it's in this ion exchange process that they take two different types of beads. One, they'll chemically charge it with a positive charge, and the other, they'll charge it with a negative charge. And when mixed and combined inside a pressure vessel or in a cartridge and wa water passes through it, it's these positive and negative charges that pull or attract the minerals, pull them out like a magnet so that there's nothing but pure water that comes out. Now, one of the uh, best tips I can give you for prolonging the life of your DI resin and getting more pure water out of it is to actually turn down the input flow. As you see, in order to purify the water, the water must make contact with the beads. The, the less time it has making contact with those beads, the less chance it has of getting good purification. So anytime I sell a DI vessel, I always put a ball valve on there so the operator can dial back the input flow. Now think about this. When you're cleaning windows and you've got water coming out of the, uh, the brush there, the, out of the jets, if it's going any more than a foot out of the brush, you're really using more water than you actually need, and you're also blowing through your filter fast. So you only need about a foot or so coming out of the brush head before the water falls off. That's plenty of water to both with your scrubbing and your rinsing. So tip number one, turn down the flow, increase the contact time between the resin and the water. Tip number two is to keep your vessel upright. In the case of a DI vessel, when the water comes in, it's using basically gravity and pressure to have the water flow down and then flow back up. If you're running it through the side, especially if this isn't full completely, you're going to have the DI slushing around. Water is going to be coming through and passing and actually bypassing, especially in the case of when you're using a cartridge. Now, you can imagine uh, this is quite often used in a multi-stage uh, cart where you may have the cart lying down horizontally. So this ends up lying down like this. Usually they, they put the cart horizontally so that uh, there's no accident of tipping the cart over. So what happens is, if this isn't full, you can imagine if this was only full to here, as soon as you turn it on the side, you'll have a void going right across the top. So if water enters in here, some will go through the resin, but of course it's going to choose a path of least resistance, which is across the top where there's, vo there's a void, there's nothing there. It's not even making contact with the resin before going through the output. So whenever possible, keep your cartridge upright or keep your DI vessel upright. And I guess a sister tip to that is, of course, uh, especially when you're using a cartridge, just make sure you're putting as much resin in here as possible. You screw off the cap here, you, you put in the resin. What I would do is, after every few scoops, tap this on a hard surface to get the DI resin to settle. You could even sprinkle some water on top to help it settle a little bit more, and then scoop some more resin in before you close this up and putting it into your housing. Tip number four is before hooking up to a DI system to flush out the customer's source water lines. Now you may be using your own garden hose or you could be using their garden hose, but still inside their pipes, inside their, their property, you don't know what's been floating around in there. 
could be a lot of rust buildup, it could be all kinds of minerals and stuff in there. If you just hook up the hose, run it for a minute or two, just kind of flush it out. That way, when you're hooking up to uh, your, the input of your DI system, you'll be making sure that you get the best kind of water possible. Tip number five is to shut off the water flow anytime you're taking a little bit of a break, even if it's just to talk to an employee or to talk to the customer. A uh, couple things you can do, if you have a univalve installed in your water fed pole, you can just activate the univalve. Sometimes you can get little shut off valves, we sell those. Uh, and then there's always the, what I call the poor man's shut off, which, you know, if you're, let's say you're just moving things around or just going from one side of the building to the other, or like I said, having to take a small break, just take the hose, pinch it, you'll be holding the pole, pinching the hose, cutting off the water flow. It's these little things that, you know, throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, really adds up. Tip number six, sometimes you'll buy a bag of resin and let's say we're going to fill up the cartridge. Well, there's enough in this bag here to fill this car cartridge several times. So we're not going to need to use the whole thing. So after you've opened this bag, you're going to want to do one of two things. You're definitely going to want to seal it up. You can either roll it up really tight, put some tape or some bungee cords on that. Uh, but you want, you know, the better you have it sealed, the more this will last in a long time, you know, sitting on the shelf or sitting in storage. Or even better is to put in a sealable container. Sometimes you can get a five gallon pail with a snap on lid or even a rubber made, you know, maybe a rectangular type of container that you can put any unused resin in, keep it, you know, nice and uh, airtight. That way it will last longer while it's in storage. So tip number seven is somewhat related to tip number six in how to store your DI resin. Now, unless you really, really have to, I don't recommend that you keep this in the vehicle, uh, especially in the summertime. You know, the same way they talk about, you know, you don't want to leave an infant or, or a pet in the vehicle in the summertime because the actual heat inside the vehicle can be so much more than what it is on the outside. Same thing goes with DI resin. DI resin doesn't want to be exposed to a lot of heat source. It doesn't want to be sitting in direct sunlight. You can, you know, if it's the bag or whatever is not 100% sealed, it can start to dry out the resin and make it just go dead. So, like I said, whenever possible, Keep this in a, you know, more of a cooler environment, cooler, dry environment inside, not next to a furnace or anything. Uh, and this will last, you know, you've got six months to a, to a year of just sitting on the shelf life if it's stored in the right conditions. So I'd just like to wrap up today's video by answering a question that I do get asked probably about three or four times throughout the course of a whole year, a whole window cleaning season. And that is, uh, maybe there might be a time a window cleaner comes in or even online, they'll buy a bag of resin. Uh, but they'll either through an email or through conversation um, ask, you know, what happened with the last bag I bought? It didn't seem to last as long. And, you know, it may seem at first to be an awkward question for me to answer because their experience or any window cleaner's experience with how long their resin is lasting is purely anecdotal. It's not scientific. It's not, oh, I only got 847 gallons where last time I got 953 because nobody's, nobody's measuring the gallons of water that's coming out. All they're kind of relating through it is maybe time, like, oh, I usually change my resin every couple of weeks, uh, or number of houses. Oh, normally I get 20 houses. The last bag, I only got 15 houses, something like that. So it's very tricky for us to answer that question. But really what's going on here most of the time, because I can tell you, uh, during the main course of the season, resin doesn't sit on the shelf very long. It might sit on the, sh the, sh the shelf for about two weeks before the next shipment comes in. Uh, really goes really fast turnover. So what usually happens is that the window cleaner scenario has changed from day to day, even though they're not really thinking about it too much. So we talked about some of the tips here. So one of the tips was slowing down the water flow. For those of you who haven't been doing that and you've been using straight water in, straight water out, well, you might have different flow rates at different properties. And you could just hit a, a stream of properties that have a high flow rate so you've actually been using a lot more water, going through a lot more water, not even realizing it. So even though you're doing a certain number of houses, you are using more water at the time. Another case might be uh, you could be having a bunch more first-time cleans. So you're having to spend more time on the glass, a lot more time scrubbing. So of course you're using more water. Um, another scenario, you might be hitting a, a bunch of houses with a, or commercial properties with a lot more hydrophobic glass. And on that particular job, more rinsing. So, of course, more rinsing, more water, burning through more filter. So, really what it comes down to is, uh, you know, like I said, there is a high turnover rate of, of this product on our shelves during the window cleaning season. 
It's not that you've got old resin or anything. It's probably just a bunch of little scenarios uh, in your environment has changed. Whatever the, uh, the, the, v, the VI tank or cartridge has been exposed to, that's what is usually the difference. And also the TDS level can change greatly from one area to another, especially if you're out in the country there. You might be hitting one spot where you've got 100 uh, TDS source water, and then you go to do the next job, and it's like 300. And when window cleaners get really, really busy uh, during peak season, I'm pretty sure that they're not always checking the source water before hooking up. If they're checking at all, quite often they'll just hook up and they'll check what's coming out of their system. So they don't really know what's going into their system at all times. Uh, so, like I said, a lot of variables as to why your DI resin might last longer one time and not so much the other time. And I'm pretty sure if like, somebody is used to getting X number of houses uh, done per bag of resin, if on the next bag they actually got five or six more properties done, they probably wouldn't even take note of it. It's only because of the way uh, window cleaners often think about time. Uh, and time and money is what it comes down to. So hopefully some of the tips that I showed you here today will help improve on your situation so you're not spending so much on DI resin this year. Anyway, thanks for watching.